What is this OMAP you speak of? While it might sound like a cool Irish navigation app, in mobile tech, OMAP stands for Open Multimedia Applications Platform. For decades, TI... Oh, him? No, not that guy. Texas Instruments has been invading the home through devices like watches, calculators, and who remembers this great toy? But now the company has infiltrated millions of pockets and purses through mobile devices with the OMAP system on a chip. While this is a huge business, OMAPs are divided into three categories. High performance for smartphones, basic multimedia for digital cameras, and integrated modem for low-cost cell phones. In this episode of Ship Wars, we're going to look at the high performance OMAPs. Almost 10 years ago, the first release, the OMAP One. was built on the ARM 926, measuring in at 90 nanometers. This ARM core maxes out at only 220 megahertz, with 48 kilobytes of cache powering devices like the Nokia 770 internet tablets released in November 2005. The OMAP Two. got into these early 2G and 3G smartphones. The ARM 1136 cores maxed out at 330 megahertz, and the Media Accelerator, IVA2, supported video conferencing and mobile TV. The big news was 3D graphics support with the help of a company struggling at the time to make it in the competitive graphics graphics chip market, Imagine Technologies, designer of the now dominant power VR chipset. But we'll save that story for the next video. It wasn't until the third generation OMAP Three. that Texas Instruments started to gain some momentum. A lot of the devices sold in 2009-2010 have OMAP 3 inside. During those years, the 65 nanometer 600 megahertz ARM Cortex A8 was the most popular core architecture, and the high-end OMAP 3 made the A8 sing by dropping it into a 45 nanometer process to break the gigahertz clock barrier. It supported HD recording and playback with IVA2+, multi-standard video encoding decoding. Another big feature, every model has the massively popular PowerVR SGX530 GPU, clocking in at 200 MHz. But with all tech, nothing is ever fast enough. Milliseconds are precious. The latest release for 2011-2012, the OMAP 4 gives some of those milliseconds back. It has the latest dual-core 45 nanometer ARM Cortex-A9 with the Neon Media Processing Engine and the latest PowerVR SGX54 series, sporting an integrated 3D graphics accelerator. It supports IVA3 through 1080p and multi-standard video decoding, making it the first mobile chip to be Netflix certified for full HD. There's three models. The OMAP 4430 has been out since early 2011 with up to 1.2 gigahertz dual cores and an SGX540 at 304 megahertz. Today, it's in the Droid Bionic and Razer, Galaxy S2, Kindle Fire, the Nook, and the Optimus 3D. It's an improvement over the Tegra 2 with support for dual-channel memory and a higher clock GPU, but a full comparison of ARM-based chips will be up in the final 2012 episode of Ship Wars. Yeah. The OMAP 4460 runs the same GPU at 384 megahertz, and the processor clocks in at 1.2 to 1.5 gigahertz. It's the main chip for TI in 2012, and OEMs use it in the Galaxy Nexus, and these are and sharp devices. But the 4470 could be the star of late 2012, early 2013, with a CPU that is 20% faster with up to 1.8 GHz dual core configurations. For basic multimedia processing and background tasks, it has two Cortex M3 cores clocked at 256 MHz, so that, like the Tegra 3, the OMAP 4470 has a way to reduce power while still maintaining performance. For graphics, the PowerVR SGX544 supports DirectX 9 and, by extension, Windows 8. It's pegged at 384 megahertz, Correct. making it two and a half times faster than the SGX540. The dual channel memory runs at 466 megahertz for high bandwidth rendering of high resolution content. For less demanding graphics, the SGX544 shuts off and a more efficient 2D graphics score takes over, improving power efficiency by at least 50%. But in the end, performance will really depend on how OEMs might put these chips to use in new tablets and smartphones. In late 2013, the upcoming OMAP 5 28 nanometer chips will use dual core ARM Cortex A15 cores for power, and two additional Cortex M4s for low intensive tasks. With two PowerVR SGX544 MP2 graphics cores clocked at 532 MHz and support for up to 8 GB of 32 dual channel low power DDR2 or DDR3 memory clocked at the same 532 MHz, devices with the OMAP5 will definitely be high resolution computing monsters, but we'll have to wait for more info in future videos. But how does the current OMAP4 compare to other ARM based processors in terms of performance? and power efficiency. Stay tuned to Chip Wars as we cover the Tegra 3, the Exynos 4 Quad, the Snapdragon S4, and Apple's A-Series processors. And as always, thanks for liking, subscribing, and watching. Let's go.